Hello guys, welcome back, I'm Julian. I'm here to do my reaction video for Season 9, Episode 3 of Shameless. This time the title of the episode is Weirdo Gallagher Vortex. That is the official title for this episode, even though on my files I have a different title. But anyways, that's the title of Season 9, Episode 3. And we are 99 episodes in. Next episode is going to be the 100th, the 100th episode of of shameless and i can't believe i made it this far yes it have it, it might have seen as like i was gonna drop it at one point but i'm still here i'm still going strong i guess and i'm excited i'm really really excited for this new episode uh so previous episode was the mo white episode right um which was crazy uh and you can see frank do what Frank does best, which is, you know, scam people, because that's what he does. Uh, so now he's going political about it. So let's see what that brings for this season. Uh, then we have uh, Fiona doing her thing as well uh, with Liam, uh, even though sometimes it feels like no one even really cares about him. Um, same thing goes with Ian, you know. Uh, but yeah, everyone is on their own thing, and let's see what uh, this episode has in store for us. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy, I hope you guys like it. Please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you love Shameless. Subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell, and you can go right now to Patreon and watch the full uncut extended version for this reaction and so much more. So in case you guys want to do that, link as always will be in the description down below. I hope you guys enjoy, hope you guys like it. And yeah, without further ado, let's just begin with season nine, episode three of Shameless. Here we go. Ninety-nine episodes in, guys. This is just incredible. See here, my on my on the file, I have this title. Is you haven't done this before, have you? And the title is actually. The Gallagher vo Vortex or something like that. We need someone who will promote and protect our values. Frank being Frank. What about Mo White? Let's make Chicago white again. Yeah. <laughs> Mo White? Yeah, who are you? Your country needs you. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Badass ladies. That'll show those misogynistic motherfuckers. <laughs> Only two dicks left. <laughs> Clearly, you haven't had much experience around a dick. It's more like sense. Oh, hey, don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> okay, this is a really fun joke. <laughs> We're gonna get busted. Okay, who's next? Uh, this one. Oh, hell no. What? Daryl fucking feathers, and he was the foreman at my last job. Oh shit, this one gets too Okay, let's do it. <laughs> the fuck you doing? Waiting. Waiting for what? Shim. Good morning, hmm. my indigenous Southsiders. Don't mind me. Just showing our support for a better tomorrow. Huh? Okay. What's a it. shim? They don't give a fuck. God. And God doesn't have a gender, or maybe it's both genders. So she, him, shim, shim. mother, father, God. And you're waiting for shim to talk to me. Tell me what to do next. <sighs> Shit. Does that happen a lot? I used to all the time in jail, but since I've been out, nothing. Is this what I think it is? Oh my god. Here you go, Miss Riley. I can assure you, there's no suffering. Bless you, sweet boy. Sparky's in a better place. Oh, mm -hmm. That's kind of sweet, you know? Because I actually thought he would be torturing animals for the rest of his life. So... She used to be good at running, you know, so. Is this the thing Whitford sucked you into? 
He didn't suck. Clifford didn't suck me into anything. I invested in a limited partnership. So Max Whitford makes all the decisions. The general partner does, yes. It's an LLC, which means my liability is limited, so I can't get sued by some junky roofer. Ah, so you can only lose all your investment. Which was how much again? A hundred thousand. A hundred thousand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. With a 30% return expected in less than a year. Come on, still got 12 blocks to go. Christ. Well. Seriously? But if he knows the guy, and he knows that the guy is not good, and that she might end up losing everything, okay, it's a good thing that he's speaking up, you know? Though he sounds a bit judgmental, but I don't know. Don't worry, Sparky. I'm gonna be with you here till the end. Oh, he just, oh, I know what it, what he was doing. Probably would like to play and run. He'd spend Aww. his day in the bright warm sun. That's actually kind of sweet. Oh, this is how we restart. That's really sweet of him, right? I really hope they're, they're not suffering. Hey. Hello? Shit, is she okay? Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, I'll be right there. I gotta go, all right? My kid's in the emergency room. You have a kid? No. But he likes to pretend that he does. It. I know. <laughs> so I know these women at trade school wasn't class. I think they can help. Mm, cool. Mm -hmm. You know, if you mouth the words olive juice, it looks like you're saying I love you. What? Watch. Oh my god, it totally does. <laughs> <All right. laughs> hey. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't get me started on shipping things, okay? Who says we're rapey? Some stupid article. What's in me? Who wrote it? Bethany Pigford Watson. Of course, she has two last names. <laughs> Does she look familiar to you? Probably some no, lesbo. No, 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 no. oh, fuck off. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They even pay black prostitutes with fake boobs to walk around in short skirts. I'm gonna kill that bitch. Oh this my is god. So unfair. I mean, look around. What, 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 what's so rapey about this place, anyway? Do your thing, girl. What's your preference? Man of your dreams or a death wish? Somebody yeah. to live on the edge with. I get nasty, boys get raspy. I won't tell if you harass me. If yeah. you me, dump that lame and bring it over here, back up. I, I think I see thing. it. Yeah. I don't know, V. Maybe this place is a little rapey. You think? Craig had the dick out right now. Craig! Oh my god! Damn it, man! Ball bag was hot. The fuck, Just man? Just a little pop quiz to see how your weekend was. Just kidding. It's actually ten questions to see if you remember how to diagram a sentence. <laughs> okay, okay. They don't talk, right? I've never been to a Buddhist temple before. I need Shim to talk to me. A uh, God. To talk to me. Any tips? <laughs> Repeat, I'm here to learn. I'm here to learn. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Buddha. Until I attain enlightenment. Until I attain enlightenment. It's not gonna happen right away. Right? Quick question. <laughs> <clears throat> Once they attain enlightenment, then will Shim talk to me? Because they did for a while. But then suddenly it stopped. So did Shim stop talking to me? Or did I stop hearing Shim? I really hope he doesn't get bullied or anything like that. Get the your fuck? dumb ass tote bag out of my space. It's actually not a tote bag, it's a satchel. Oh my and god. who the hell starts a new school with three weeks left in the school year? All the private schools are full. Shit. Fucking satchel, boy. You have to be mean. Probably can't call nine or ten women yesterday. You think women like that? I'm in construction, I can't just change. Doesn't matter if time's up or not. If a chick walks by, I instinctively grab my balls and yell, suck on this. It's just what happens. All right, let's start yeah. there. Yeah, you know what, but like... You're not an animal without control of your actions, you know? I'm just saying, you could 
decide not to do that and respect the ladies that you see. But like, there's absolutely no reason why you should do that. It's just that idea and that's the, the sexism that there is, you know, that makes you do that. It's just, that's just awful. You can't call them chicks anymore. We need a consistent standard. All right, no. here's your standard. Assume you are disgusting, that no one wants you to touch them, and they couldn't care less if you think they're pretty or not. There's your damn standard. That's your damn standard, I've yeah. I've never been so confused. The bottom line is that the bar can't be rapey anymore. If women stay away, bad for business. Plus, rapey is wrong. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's the point. And, and more importantly, rapey is wrong. <laughs> and I'm glad that he sees it. You know, I much more, more like, you know, like a lot more the fact that Kevin is at least trying to change, you know? But this preconceived notion of like, oh... Like, you're a father now of two daughters, so now I understand it. Shouldn't be like that, you know? It should just be that you respect another human being, you know? And, like, it, it is, you know, sometimes, I'm not gonna deny it. It feels like it's, like, so difficult to understand women because some women like to be told... Look, if we want to be told we're pretty, we will approach you and, like, you know... Let you know that we want to know. But if they are not approaching you, maybe someone just wants to feel pretty and they wore or, or are dressing the way they are because they like it. There's no necessity of you harassing them. Just saying. Like this standard that Veronica was talking about? On point. What's that twirly writing? Cursive. You know cursive. Yes, ma'am. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that he's listening to Frank. Are you awake? I don't think he is. Sorry. Uh uh. Hey, um, have you achieved enlightenment here before? I'm just, I'm not really getting anything. <laughs> you have tried for, what, an hour? A uh, rough estimate. How long does it normally take? For Buddha, it took one night. Well, that's not that bad. After ages and lives of meditation. Right. Uh, okay. okay. He needs something quicker that than that. I that kind of time. Sorry. Uh, namaste. <laughs> Okay, hello. What's going on? Are we? Are they? Okay. Okay. Hey. hey. Oh, okay. Okay. What's going on? I mean, go off, Debbie. How old is Debbie, Debbie hey, by the way? Okay? What the hell happened to you? Fell off the jungle gym. Made it to the top, though. Yeah. Is that right? Hi. Are you the father? Uh, no. No, I'm the, uh, brother. My dad's drunk, and my mom disappeared. Are you the guardian? No, not exactly. Okay, well, we'll get her over to X-ray and set the arm. Okay. And we can only release her to a parent or legal guardian. Yes, sweetie. Offerman, he's a congressman? You know him? White guy, red face, sweaty? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be damned. Hey, babe, did you know that Wubby's a congressman? Seriously? Really? When I was a dominatrix, he was one of my regulars. Oh. Dude used to like me to whip him and call him Wubby. And now he's a congressman. <laughs> Do you still whip him? Well, I retired years ago. Leather underwear is not too good for my lady parts. <laughs> Would you ever think about coming out of retirement? Never. Even if it meant giving an underprivileged Southside kid a chance at achieving his dream? <laughs> yes, not my ride in a bike, Carl. You can't just strap on a pair of stilettos, pop a ball gag in someone's mouth, and start to whip in them. And that is not how you ride a bike. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's okay. <laughs> Who's going to let a poor Southside kid become an officer anyway? Oh, okay, Carl. I'll just enlist, embrace the suck, 
retire an old, disabled, sad alcoholic. Oh. Maybe they'll let me teach high school ROTC from my wheelchair if I'm lucky. Come on, Bootsy, I know you gotta eat. Oh, okay, she's gonna do it. <laughs> Look at him with his puppy eyes. <laughs> God damn it. Gallagher's are good. See that girl over there? Cracker girl? <laughs> what about her? She wants to kill me. <laughs> so what I was thinking, what if I help you get better grades? Like with homework and stuff. For free? No, for protection for Cracker Girl. <laughs> okay. I am feeling the shit out of this class. Okay. Okay, deal. Okay. Name's Todd. Liam. Okay, okay, that's that's good, I guess, right? Getting himself some protection. Yes. Oh, wrong house. Sorry. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Uh you a Wyman support? I am. Fuck. What the hell do you wear to a seven o'clock business meeting at a hotel bar? Bar. Uh -huh. Where? Can you not be jealous? She's doing business. She's not going to dare to fuck She's the guy. Be you and Max will be the other people there. Yeah, it's me and Max at a bar signing papers. Super exciting. <laughs> Hello, old friend. Hello. I mean, she always did a lot hot. Woo! Yes! <laughs> she still got she still got it, you know? Sorry, dude. I got here as quick as I could. Is she alright? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's got a broken arm, but she's fine. Look, I, I need you to be her dad. What? Yeah, they'll only release her to a parent or a guardian, so I need you to pretend to be her dad. Also, you're a drunk. I'm not doing that. Brad, come on, help me out here. So you want me to impersonate her father? Yeah, yeah, and sign some paperwork, but I already filled out most of it. Why can't you do it? I'm not old enough to be her dad, and plus I already told them I was her brother. So I'm your father, too? Yeah. yeah. Father, stepfather, whatever. I'm not old enough to be your father. Yeah, but you look old. <laughs> I'm married now. Okay? Yeah. I just got my shit together. No way am I getting sucked into your weirdo Gallagher vortex. What the fuck? Brad, please, look. If I don't get her out of here, they're going to call DCFS. You can't just walk into an emergency room and pretend to be some kid's dead. This is the universe telling you to do the right thing. What if Zan was seriously hurt? You ever think about that? You're not her parent. You wouldn't be able to help her. Brad. Sorry, dude. Brad. Well, he's not wrong, you know. Was that the father? Yeah. There he goes. You know, the least I could do is help these people remember what our neighborhood stands for, huh? <laughs> Mo White is back. Oh, oh, what happened? Ooh, what happened? Uh, uh, nothing, nothing. You sure? Yeah, yeah, everything's fine. Oh, oh, oh geez, let, 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 let's go this way. What the hell is happening? Are Does you all have... right? Never better, never better. Are you in pain? Huh? Mo, I'm your campaign manager. If you've got a health condition, you got to tell me about I it. I don't have a health condition. I just have to watch where I walk, that's all. Why? Hey, is, is, uh, is there a school nearby? Why? Mm. Ankle bracelet. Whenever I get within 100 yards of a school, I get this little shock. What? Why do you wear an ankle bracelet that shocks you when you get near a school? He's it a was years hater. ago. She told me she was 18. But... But? <sighs> but what, Mo? She wasn't. What? Look, we were in love. We were together for five years. She left me on her 20th birthday. Oh. So she was 15. Frank, will you calm down? Oh my I God. I paid my dues. Well, then why do you have to wear a yeah. fucking ankle bracelet? It's only for another six months until. until I'm off parole. You're on parole. Oh, Frank, listen. Oh, don't give fuck. up on me. These people, huh? they need me. You got him security. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> he has a muscle, you know. And he has the brain. What the hell is this? This is a consent form. From now on, any woman you want to harass has to give her written consent before you're allowed to bother her. No woman's going to sign this unless she's hammered. She has to be sober. Yeah. 
I'm never ever getting laid again. I'm glad. Did you ever think you were? <laughs> also, the alibi will no longer be serving any drink called Sex on the Beach. It will only be known as the beach. What is that? Nobody drinks those. Women do. And uh, you are? If I could just have you sign this right here. In scent form. You know what? Here we go. For the thousandth time, there was no way I could know that girl was only 15. Oh, what? shut up. And my relationship with Heather is long behind me now. And did you know <laughs> that in China, the age of consent is 13? And that is a country on the rise. Shit. Okay, thank you, Mo. Thank you, thank you so much. All right, we will see you at the polls. Here we go. this dude. They hiked the Appalachian Trail together, said he was helping her get a merit badge. Mo left Congress to care for his dying wife. Mo left Congress to bang a 15-year-old. She said she was 18, and you should have seen her. Look at this. You tell me this girl looks 15, huh? You still have a photo? Jesus, she looks like she's 10. 12, maybe. Okay, okay, oh okay. My did Mo God. make a mistake? Yes, he did, but he regrets it. And what's more important, he paid for it. He still has a photo of her. It... He went to jail. The point is, we all make mistakes. Don't we all want a second chance? Man, I know I do. You have and for the South second, side, third, and fourth is that chances. second chance. Oh yeah, my God! You know what? Mo All of you Mo deserve Mo this. Mo 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 last hour since last. Rapey toxic. <laughs> I'm sorry to bother you, Mr. Congressman, but there's a uh, Lenora, Lenora here to see you. She says she has an appointment, but I don't have it on the calendar. Send her in. Congressman <laughs> Uberman will see you now. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, <Uberman. laughs> me. She's doing it for the kids, you know, for the future. <laughs> Woo! What does that mean? Where is she leaving? You say you're her brother, and then you're her guardian. A man shows up and then leaves, and now you say you're taking care of her until her mother comes back, but she said her mother's not coming back. Okay, I understand that okay. that sounds... We will sort all this out when DCFS gets here. You know what, Lip? Right. That probably will be for the better, you know? I know that you're trying to do something good, but, like... What if something even worse happened in this, was happened this time, you know? There's a kid I want you to recommend to West Point. Oh. <laughs> the kid, big heart, yeah. born to serve. Ah! <laughs> I heard he recommended someone. Ah, oh, did you bitch, say? I'm not asking. <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> Carl Gallagher. <laughs> maybe, maybe I could uh, uh, unrecommend the other kids. Maybe. maybe. <laughs> 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 the woman is traumatized. She doesn't know what to do. Oh, God. Oh, I think I know what Blip's about to do. Oh, God. Don't disconnect the guy. Okay, he's just gonna make one of the machine beats, right?
Oh god, lip. How did you know for sure you were gay? Because I was having sex with a man. Why? I don't know. I think I might be gay. You're not gay. How do you know? Yeah, how do you Where's know? Where's this coming from? Is this because you're a welder now? No. I don't know. I, I've just been feeling ways that I've never felt before. Have you had sex with another woman? Yeah. I did once, a long time ago, but I let a woman I was babysitting for go down on me. Okay. Really? Yeah. That's really? It. Did you return the favor? <laughs> yeah, you're not gay. You're a pillow princess. Have you been with a girl since? Yep. I just made out with one in the bathroom. Okay. Well, that's a start. What kind of porn do you like? I don't watch porn. Bullshit. Oh, come on. Everyone watches, Everyone porn. watches porn, yes. <laughs> I'm at least bisexual. No, you're not. Why not? Why do you keep telling me what I'm not? I thought gay Jesus was all about love and acceptance. Exactly. Sorry. Apparently now I'm the gay Che. What? Lately I'm just feeling like... Hey, oh. newsflash. You're not Jesus and you're not gay Che. You're a bipolar Gallagher who doesn't take his meds. So why don't you stop trying to save the world and save yourself? I don't know what I am anymore. You know why? Maybe some tough love is what At least needs. you know you're gay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Lenora obviously <laughs> thinks very highly of you. Yes, sir. <laughs> so. <laughs> I know of no finer candidate for admittance to West Point than Carl Gallagher. Okay, good to know. <laughs> Damn right you don't. <laughs> I love this! <laughs> v is a fucking queen, man. <laughs> oh, hello! <laughs> pretty fucking good apology. Yeah, I will say so. <laughs> oh, the Gallagher's. What does it say? Cert certified vagina safe. <laughs> Only Kevin, man. Okay, guys, so that was the end of season 9, episode 3 of Shameless. And you know who is extremely confusing for me? To me? Ford. I, I can never figure him out. Uh, which is... A good thing, I guess. You know, I never know what he really is about. Like, when he's... I don't know. I don't know what is it. But, like, he's the character I find myself, you know... I don't know. Maybe because he's a new character, right? And we are just getting to know them. I mean, all the other characters, we kind of know their motivations. We kind of know how they will react to certain things. Even if they discover new things about themselves, we kind of, we already, we've been here for nine seasons, you know? 99 episodes in, we can, like, I think we can assume that we know the characters that have been with us from the get-go, you know? So, uh, but him, Ford, is a completely mystery to me, which is good, I guess, you know, because... He is uh, different and complicated, and like I have ups and downs with him, and I think it's that's that's okay. I think, um, but yeah. So this episode, he was like, he is supporting of Fiona, you know. He is, but he is ultimately, you know, jealous, which is something that I think it's very normal, I guess, for a person to feel, especially if this person, not that it's a requirement, you know, a, a little bit of jealousy, I think it's, it's okay. Too much when it goes out of control. It's not, it's a big red, red, uh, red flag. Um, but a bit of it, I don't think it hurts anyone, right? A, a bit of, just a little bit. Um, so for me, him being 
jealous of like the fact that this guy might be, you know, maybe she will go with him since we have not established what we are, you know. I like him freaking out. I like him not thinking that he has Fiona, you know, that Fiona is not going to do anything and like, you know, so I think it's good. A bit of jealousy, I think it's good. Um, but that is kind of throwing, throwing Fiona off, you know, but Maybe, you know, this is a time where where they can, like, Fiona finally can start building something with someone who does care about her. You know, truly, truly cares about him. Maybe he is, he doesn't know how to express it, you know, and, like, hopefully the jealousy thing is just, you know, just a small thing and it's not going to be something that is going to bother Fiona and, like, you know then I think it's okay. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll just give, give this relationship a little bit more time because I think that they are just getting to know each other uh, and experience new things. And I think Fiona is experiencing a new type of relationship as well. So it might take a little bit of time. And, like, I don't think I have anything against Ford. You know, I don't, like, I have to say, it's not, like... The guy that she married, what was his name that he actually, who was a singer? Him I liked, I remember. Not when he wrote the song, but I liked him. You know, he was all, it, like, he was really into Fiona, but, you know, they got married way too quickly, and like, yeah. So, um, but, like, honestly, not a lot of people I have liked that she has dated, you know? You have Jimmy Steve, who was, like, the worst one, I think. Then the other one, uh, the one that she almost married. What's his name? The the junkie. I don't remember his name. And like he was just awful, you know. And she has had her first share of extremely bad relationships. So if she is in this one, and it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, because one of the things that Shameless is always about is trying to be as realistically possible with a relationship as they possibly can. We have seen that with Veronica and Kevin. We have seen with all the other relationships that Fiona has had. It's always very realistic. So I am okay. I'm down with 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 Fiona and and Ford and like what they could possibly be in the future. I really hope that Fiona does not get, you know, scam or anything like that. I really do hope that uh, the fact that Ford is suspicious of this guy and, like, you know, it's for a good reason other than him being just jealous about him and Fiona. Hopefully his judgment, his character judgment is a little bit better than just because of his jealousy, you know? And if it is, hopefully Fiona can, can figure it out and, you know, don't get don't get scammed or something. Because I don't want her to lose everything she has built, you know? Um, this... Uh, world, I think, in this show, I, if if one of if one of them, you know, deserves what they have at the moment, it's definitely one of them is Fiona, you know. So, hopefully, that doesn't end in a bad way. Hopefully, um. Anyways, so we have that with Fiona. Then we have Ian, who is confused, you know, because his his religion or what he thought it was his religion and his connection to Shim, you know, um, kind of has lost its meaning. You know, he's kind of, he's feeling lost right now. And honestly, I kind of understand him. Like, like, I like the fact that they are, you know, talking about religion and like experiencing that and like telling that, that, you know, story with Ian. I, I like that. Um, but like like Debbie said, you know, and a little bit of tough love maybe was necessary is that, you know, he is bipolar. He is not, you know, um, on his meds apparently. So maybe he does need to get back to it and maybe find his way that way, you know, because as long as he's healthy, then things will come to him, you know, and and the fact that he used to understand and like hear Shim talk through him um, maybe is could be that it's part of his uh, bipolar you know so hopefully it's not but hopefully he, he can find it what is whatever it is that he needs again um, but in a healthy way you know and I think having his meds and all of that it's very important for him 
to continue living a, 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 as much as a normal life as he wants to live. You know, that doesn't mean that he doesn't get to experience religion or look for answers and things like that. Because, you know, bipolar or not, sometimes we question that, you know. Um, so I am, I ho hopefully, you know, he understands that he can have both, you know. So fingers crossed for that. Now, uh... Debbie is kind of like experimenting now and you know what like the fact that Ian was so dismissive you know I don't know if it was because he's dealing with his own things but like the fact that she has had an attraction or has right now an attraction for for another woman um it could mean a lot of things you know I, I think that oftentimes we want or we have that necessity of falling into one label, you know, and I think that, that the important thing right now for Debbie is to just experiment what she's feeling, you know, she doesn't necessarily have to be a lesbian or bisexual or whatever, or pansexual, uh, in order to have a, a deep, meaningful relationship with someone of her same gender, you know, um, so... Yeah, I mean, right now, one experience, like, it doesn't need to, uh, like, to classify you as anything, you know? So, um, I did not like the fact that if she feels that she might be gay or she might be bisexual, you know, I like that Ian then apologized because he wasn't really listening to her. And, like, she could be. But also, if she's not comfortable with any labels or is not sure that she is anything, then it's, it's okay to live there as well for the moment, you know? So hopefully she understands that and, 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 and she can find some type of happiness, you know, in the moment that she's living. I don't, I don't know. I find her friend really cute, you know, and like they, there is sparks there. Absolutely. Um, but she could also be a pillow princess, definitely, yes. So, we'll see what it turns out to be, right? Uh, but I'm glad that they're exploring a little bit more about... And not necessarily just about her sexuality, but more about Debbie in, in a romantic relationship. Because she has not had that, like, for real, right? Because she had Derek, and then she had... Uh, What's the name of that guy with the blonde hair? I don't remember him. Uh, and pretty much that's it, you know. And she's young and, like, it's okay to experiment, I guess. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, we'll see what that what happens there. I'm not sure how old she is, though. She's still underage, if I'm not wrong. So, yeah. Anyways. V. Well, Kevin and V. Realizing, like I said, during my reaction... That um, you don't need to become a father of a, a, a girl or you don't have to remind yourself that you come from a woman or remind yourself that you have sisters or, or, or cousins or, you know, nieces and things like that to actually understand about consent and understand that everywhere needs to be a safe space for everyone. And especially for women, since that's the, uh, the, the, the group that gets targeted the most, right? One of the groups. I'm not saying it's the only group. Um, but the thing is that, um, you know, it takes him an article for, for Kevin to actually wake up. And the thing is that I'm much more, I'm, I'm very comfortable with people with, you know, like Kevin or like everyone else. Starting at somewhere, realizing their mistakes, because sometimes I feel like, you know, there are differences. For instance, the Mo White guy and Kevin and everyone else. is The thing is that one committed a crime, the other ones have committed probably crimes in the sense of, like, harassing women, women. But the thing is that I'd rather see them start at somewhere trying to change than... They just be like, nah, it's too difficult. Like, that's just the way the world works. And, like, it's always going to be like that. And not even try, you know? So, and sometimes I feel like we put too much, you know, of a barrier for men 
you know, and for society to change. Maybe because we, we're afraid of, of, of the result. But you have to start somewhere, you know. And yes, I am, uh, you know, I think that with new generations will come the change. But for these people that are from other generations, I just think that it's completely fine that we start somewhere, you know, even if they are 80. There is still space to grow and it's still there is still space to uh, be able to understand, you know, that those things that used to be okay, it's just that, you know, what's the difference and what I think is the difference between why it was good before and why it's not good anymore. For instance, the harassment on the street where, you know, you pass by a construction site and guys are just going to be disgusting. Men are just going to be disgusting. Um, you know, I, I think that why it was okay before is because we were afraid. We were not that we are not anymore, but I think that new generations of women are able to just, you know, be done with it. We tire of it. You know, most of this new generations have been raised by strong mothers who are like, don't take crap from anyone. So now it's paying off for, because they're like, why should I take crap from anyone, right? So that's the generational change is happening and we're seeing it happen, you know? And I think that is extremely important, you know? And for people to dismiss the, the fact that, ah, it used to be okay. I don't understand why now is bad. Well, maybe before you have to understand the... It was a different thing, you know, there was no social media to confront people, there were no devices to actually record disgusting behavior on the street and like, you know, they were not even like DNA tests when you claim that someone was like, who someone like abused you or raped you or something like that. So you can prove it, you know, so a lot of things advance and with that I think that, you know, women's rights also are advancing and like you know i think it's 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 a good thing you know that we are in this t time where you know women are not taking more of the crap of course there's gonna be resistance from some men you know from some people even from some women you know who believe that you know they're not doing anything wrong, wrong. and like i have like I have like talked to women who are older than me and like you know when they sometimes hear oh this woman is but like like the fact is like but we all have gone through that yeah but like to see their faces of like when you tell them but we don't have to honestly it changes your like it has happened to me as well with things that I thought okay they're never gonna change and then realizing hey they could change you know and be like Oh my god. Like why didn't I speak up and like, you know? And it it's 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 good that we have that change, you know? Um so yeah, it's it's difficult. I'm not going to say it's not, you know, but if you're a decent human being, then you will go with the change, you know? You will understand that hey, you know, I I don't think that we have to go to the extreme of like written consent. You know, um, and I think that they w went to that point to kind of like for us to see it where it, li it lies. But honestly, verbal consent is enough. And and what I heard uh, one of my favorite actresses from the MCU, Lizzie Olsen, said is like, no is a no is a full sentence. And like, I think that is important, extremely, extremely important. Um, and especially that we need to teach our children. Uh, and the men around us that no means no. And it sounds so simple. But some people don't get it sometimes. You know, and like sometimes think that no means maybe. And like no will always mean no. You know, we need to teach that to our kids, you know, to our, uh, to our young men and, and, and children. And like both female and male, you know, that no is a full sentence and that no always means no and if you want something say yes if you want it and there is no necessity of hiding because there's nothing wrong with it either for women to you know have fun if they want to and for men to accept 
that no is a no and let, it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with the person who just doesn't want to do anything that you just asked, you know? Uh, so yeah, yeah, it's, it's honestly a great thing to talk about, you know, and, and having the, the alibi and like the people inside of the alibi kind of like being a little bit understanding without being too on the nose. I really liked it. I really, really, really liked it. Uh, then removing the signs and things like that, I think it was good. You know, I, I, I wish that it could have taken this long, you know, but hey, change has to happen at some point. If we are, if, if, and it's never too late. And if we we're going to say, oh, now they're making the change, then, you know, it's like, do we really want the change? And if it's happening, why question it, you know? Let's just go with the flow, in a, in a, I guess, you know? Yeah. Um, v, though, returning to her always. <laughs> it was amazing. It was amazing. I love that she did it. She did it for Carl, you know? I think she was enjoying it. A hundred percent. But she did it for Carl in order to get him the recommendation because sometimes, you know, for kids on the south side there are not many opportunities and she had the opportunity to help out a friend so she did it what the hell is that sound anyways wait what the hell was that sound i'm so sorry oh it's happening Okay, I'm gonna finish. Anyways, hold on, guys. Okay, sorry. Got a little bit distracted. But, yeah, so the, um... Yeah, I'm glad that Veronica helped uh, Carl. Carl, who is still doing his thing with the puppies. And I understand where he's coming from, you know. But are some of them, of the dogs, actually suffering, you know? I don't know. I mean, yes, it is good to wait until they are, um, um, they die peacefully. But is it peacefully? Or what? I don't know. I am, it, it kind of scares me a little bit because I feel like the dogs might be suffering and he's doing this a little bit more for himself than for, the, well, I don't know, you know? So it's, it's scary, you know? It's scary and it's, um, a little bit sad, everything that's happening with the poor dogs, you know, so, yeah. Um, anyways, Lip. Oh, my God. Lib, 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 Lib. I, I love that Lib has a big heart, and he wants to help, and he feels like he will be trained, will be betraying Zen if he just hands her over to the system, you know? But the thing is that um, it's important to know that... She has parents, you know, and that he is not uh, um, family. And what if something bigger happens? What what is something even more wrong happen with uh, with her? Like, wouldn't you want her to be in a safe place? You know, yes, she seems like she's getting herself in trouble all the time. But honest, honestly, it, 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 I don't know. I feel like I feel like Lip is projecting some of his insecurities and his abandonment issues onto her, you know. So since he, when he was younger, felt that he was abandoned, he doesn't want her to feel that same way, you know. He feels like I'm the only one he has, she has left, and. It's understandable that he said that he wants to be there for him, for her, but it's also not. It could get him in a lot of trouble, and it could get the kid in 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 bad situations as well, you know. And I don't know what I will do. But honestly, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, it's not as simple for Lib since we know Lib. It's not as simple as just like just get her. You know, and just hand her to the government. It's not that easy. But at the same time, it shouldn't be this hard, you know, for him. And, like, he needs to focus on his sobriety as well, you know. And the kid is really not his responsibility. He used to hook up with the ant. Like, he is, like, I understand that for him is, 
you know, a lot more, but I don't know if he's doing what what is right. I don't know if he's doing what is right for him and what is right for her as well. You know, I don't I don't know. And it ca- kind of scares the hell out of me, you know. So, yeah. Anyways, I love it this episode. Um uh, Liam also f- his first day back. And I'm glad that he's smart enough to get himself some muscle, you know. Um, that was that was really funny. Um, and yeah, yeah. That was a good episode. Well, and Frank is doing the, what Frank does. And like, do we really need to talk about Mo White? Because he is just a disgusting person. He's, he wears... He's still wearing because of, of his uh, court order, right? A uh, 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 thing, because at first I was like, does he has like sciatica or something like that? No, it wasn't that. It was that he is wearing an uh, uh, an ankle, you know, thing that is snaps at him every time he's close to a school zone. So that is just, and then rem- like the fact that he admits that he was with a girl for five years. Okay, he was with a girl for five years until she was 20, you know, and he was what, 55 or something? He was like, or 60, I don't know, five years with a girl until she was 20, meaning that she was between 14 and 15 when he actually met her. And he's like, she actually did look 15, like 18. And then everyone else sees the picture and the girl looks 10. So this fucking pedophile and the fact that Frank is supporting this. Like, how low can he get? Like, when you think Frank has gotten into the lowest level that you can, he finds a new low. I don't know how he does it, but he finds a new low. And now, since he wants the money, he's supporting a known pedophile. How, how, like... Honestly, when you think he can be any more of his comeback, there he goes, trying to, you know, make sure you know he's just awful, you know? Um, And he's still, you know, he's like, okay, he's not gonna win. And, like, I don't think that's even what it matters, because, like, chances are, maybe he will win. You know, and you're supporting a criminal. Like, oh, Frank, Frank, Frank. Frank, you know, Ugh. I hate him, and I hate Mo White, and I I hate that, I hate that. Um, but anyways, uh, I hope you guys enjoy my reaction. <laughs> I hope you guys continue supporting for more because I will be doing more reaction videos for the shows that we love. Um, thank you to everyone who probably is watching. I don't know if you guys are watching the one hour and twenty five minutes that I just recorded, but I hope you do because honestly, Shameless is one of my favorite shows. And I have so much to talk about because we know the characters so well by now. And we're still getting to know them There, that there's always something to talk about, right? So anyways, drop your comments in the comment section down below uh, about what you think of the episode so we can continue the conversation. Uh, like I said, give it a lot of thumbs up. Hearts if you're on Patreon. Thank you so much for watching and for all your support. And that's it. I'll see you guys next time for episode 904, which will be the 100th episode of Shameless. So yes, that's it. I'll see you guys next time for more. That's it. I'll see you guys. Bye.